Good morning, everyone. I want to thank you all for being here today. Um, just want to give you a little operational update. As of right now, the dam's outflow is up to 7,250 CFS, and currently its inflow is averaging between 9 and 10,000 CFS. So there's been a lot of talk about maps and where we are, and we want to be very transparent. We want to be very forthcoming with all our information because we preach that we want our community be, to be prepared. Well, the best way we can prepare our community is by giving them the information and the tools that they need. But there's a responsibility that comes with giving information. When you give information, it has to be accurate and it has to be precise. The 100-year maps that we saw from FEMA, they're just, they're just too broad brush for us. It's not good enough for our residents. So we sat in a room and we said, well, how can we make these better? And I'll tell you what, I have a talented team and the county has an even more talented team. In the last two years, we've been doing nothing but embracing technology. We want to shatter the mold of we've always done it this way and embrace every bit of technology that we can. I challenged my team and I said, how can we do this? How can we make better maps for our residents? And we started brainstorming and the answer was, well, we do make maps all the time. We make them on wildland fires. And how do we do that? We actually get aerial reconnaissance and we get ground troops on the ground and actually verifying all our data. So that's exactly what we did. We said, could that work? And everyone just said, well, we've never done that before. And I'll tell you what, nothing makes me happier than hearing the words, we've never done that before, because that's what we should be doing. As firefighters, we're taught to think outside the box, brainstorm. That's what we should be doing, so I love it. So that's exactly what we did. We brought in a drone company, the same one we use over the 4th of July and they started doing aerial reconnaissance last week. As the river and the CFS was lower, because it hadn't been raised yet, we took measurements at that point. On Sunday and Monday, we took even more measurements as it went up to 7,000. And we started measuring those differentials and we started making our own maps. And then we put them on, and we plotted them on the map, and then we said, ground troops, go see if it's accurate. And they were spot on, it was amazing. So that's where we are today was bringing these maps to the citizens of Kern County so that they can make informed decisions and be prepared. I'll tell you, these are just version one of our maps. We are constantly going to be updating these maps on our websites so that you guys all have the information you need. And as the flows change, the mapping will change and we're going to keep pushing these maps out. We'll continuously fly this area, keep checking it on the ground to make sure we have the best information to you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Billy Steers, Deputy Chief Operations, Kern County Fire. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown of the maps that, that we are utilizing, uh, the Chief was speaking about. So utilizing the UAS, we were able to get live data and map the actual river corridor where the water set along the river. And so with that, on the map, you can see the blue actually represents uh, the actual river and the flow of that it was as of yesterday at 7,000 uh, CFS. So as we, as we map it every single day, multiple times a day, we'll be able to update this map, uh, get a better picture of where we're seeing inundation, and then compare that to the inundation maps that we received from the, the Corps engineers and DWR. So as we got the ground truthing of those maps, we were able to compare those to the inundation maps that we were received that were over predicting uh, based on the flows. So we took those maps, overlaid where, where did we have the most matchup, and, and this is where we came to with this map that you're looking at now. So you'll see it as a step one, two, and three. Uh, the green is on step one. There is some green overlay as we overlaid the river over the overlay. That's what the projected, uh, the river would have looked like. So you can see it stayed within about 80 to 90% accuracy of that, that area. As you go to the yellow and the orange, what that is predicting and representing is up to 2,000 CFS additional added to the river. So up to 9,000 is where it is. As, as, the water, as the river adjusts and we go to 7,500 CFS, we will continue to map that, relook, validate it on the ground, validate what we're seeing in inundation, and then to be able to allow us to utilize those inundation maps and see and update which ones are the most accurate so we can keep staying ahead of uh, the flows and where any of the potential inundation areas of concern are. So primarily right now uh, we have 75 in, uh, uh, firefighters in Goodmanville because we see, we're seeing inundation potentials 
in Goodmanville, uh, Choctaw, and around in Manor. So we're prioritizing and doing point protection of uh, structures in there, utilizing sandbags. So they're in place now, making sandbags in the area, and we'll continue to work the whole entire stretch of the Kern River as we uh, update these maps and continue to find additional areas. So that's the operational update uh, for today. Good morning, Deputy Chief Zachary Wells, Kern County Fire. If I can get the snow melt map uh, behind me. So uh, I know the, the public and everyone is aware that we have a lot of snow up in the Sierras and that snow will turn into water and come down through the Lake Isabella uh, Reservoir, through the dam and through the Kern River. And so we are constantly looking each and every day for more data. And what we do know is, is data uh, is a prediction and these predictions change uh, each and every day based on weather pattern, based on uh, the inflows and outflows of the Kern uh, and what's coming out of the dam. So we're working with all the stakeholders, with the water master, with the city of Bakersfield, the county of Kern, and the Department of Water Resources to update our predictions. And so our predictions are only good as the model and the information that we have available. So each and every day as new weather data comes in, as the CFS comes from predicted to actual, we will continue to train uh, the information that we have to provide accurate information to the public. So one of the things that we know uh, that is constantly uh, being looked at is the CFS being uh, outflow from the dam. And that's currently uh, moved from 7,000 earlier in the week to around 7,200, 7,300. And it's a variable. It is constantly in motion. And what we know is the, the level that that outflow is at the higher that it goes, the uh, more water we're pushing out of Lake Isabella Reservoir so that we can uh, reduce the amount of time that we're at gross pool uh, and that we extend the time from the date where we have water being controlled through the outflow uh, in, before it enters in the spillway. So this information is very variable based on weather and so as the weather heats up, we know more snow melt will come out of the Sierras. But uh, this chart that I have behind me is what we look at and where we're basing our models off of and will be updated as we get more information from our stakeholders. So uh, as, uh, as we control the outflows and we work with the, the water master and we work with the operations, the boots on the ground, uh, what generates uh, the lines on the map based on the information that we're getting in real time. It's a fine balance between predicting, predictions and real time. And so that's the, where we get the information and how we hope to share with the public so that everyone can make informed decisions. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name's Ryan Alsop. I'm the county's uh, chief administrative officer. I wanna thank you all for being here today. I also wanna thank our fire chief uh, all of our fire chiefs command staff <clears throat> and uh, all the men and women of the fire department for their leadership uh, not just here at the EOC in planning and, and strategizing uh, but the work that they're doing uh, right now um, as the uh, as the chief or as somebody earlier noted we've got around 80 uh, fire personnel who are uh, out on the river working with residents uh, if you go out there, you'll see them. Their, their equipment is there, uh, helping uh, not only manufacture sandbags, but place sandbags, uh, helping residents do that. Uh, and that uh, is going to be the uh, uh, status quo uh, for uh, the coming days and probably over, over the next week. Uh, so uh, just really grateful for, uh, for, for, for the chief uh, and, his, and his team. Uh, we had a great meeting last night uh, down in the Goodmanville Road neighborhood. Uh, we, uh, we were invited down there by a couple of property owners who hosted, hosted us and really took uh, the, the, uh, the role of, an, uh, of putting out an invitation. They had a listserv for the community. And uh, we had about 150 or so people uh, that joined that meeting. They were from uh, the areas that are immediately east of uh, Manor. Uh, those neighborhoods there, uh, all throughout that Goodmanville Road area, both sides of the river, Choctaw Valley residents. We had some folks from uh, the Rancheria 
uh, road area that were there. And uh, that was a value added meeting. Uh, we shared these maps with them ahead of time, even though we're uh, officially uh, providing them to you all and the rest of the public today. Uh, gave them a really good sense of what to expect in the immediate uh, days ahead and, uh, and, and potentially weeks ahead and answered a lot of questions. Uh, obviously, they have a lot of questions and uh, did, a, did, a, did a really good job um, trying to, trying to uh, get them the answers that they needed. Uh, again, our fire uh, personnel are out there today and uh, are continuing to answer questions and work with homeowners. Uh, we will have a, a, a dashboard, uh, a, a website that is a sort of a clearinghouse for all information related to uh, our planning and preparation uh, for uh, potential inundation. And it will be updated uh, on a daily basis. We will, uh, all of these maps that you're seeing up here uh, are going to be getting updated, uh, whether on a daily basis, certainly on a weekly basis, those new maps will be posted to the website, kerncounty.com. Simply go there. That's our homepage. It'll be easy to find. It'll be interactive. People can uh, provide information to us. Uh, they can get the information that they need, phone numbers and other things. We'll have videos. This press conference will be up there. Uh, we'll have everything that we do related to this will be uh, up there. Um, lastly, I wanted to say that uh, we had a, uh, an all-hands meeting in the EOC shortly before you arrived this morning, started at 9 o'clock. Uh, this room was full of people, and we had a screen full of people um, from all over the area. We had the Corps of Engineers participating. We had the water master participating. Um, everybody, uh, superintendent of schools, they're, they're, everybody was here. Uh, and uh, I want to reiterate uh, something that uh, Zach had said uh, earlier. The, the goal of the, the water master and the core in terms of outflows on the river is averaging releases at 7,500, at or around 7,500, at times above that, at times below that, but keeping an average of 7,500 outflow out of the river, the, the, uh, the strategy is keeping it there and averaging those flows uh, over the course of the next many weeks and months, avoids having to spike and release more um, uh, out of the dam, and uh, that is that is the that's where we're at. That is currently what we're planning for. Now, all of that could be, all of that could change, and uh, you know, uh, with weather events and uh, you know other things that are happening, many different variables. But that is the plan, uh, and I want to make sure that that's clear for residents because I, I, they're they're wanting to know that. So. Um, I think uh, unless the sheriff has something, I think I we're going to open it up. I'm glad good. you're here. Glad the city of Bakersfield is here. City of Bakersfield is participating in our uh, EOC briefings. Uh, we have representation from fire, representation from the police department, and uh, they are uh, they were out at our meeting last night down in this area. Uh, they spoke to the residents, so we're we're pleased to have their uh, participation and partnership uh, in this. And with that, I think we're going to open it up to questions. Sure, I'll have Chief Sears do that. He is, as, as we finish this press conference, going to go in, uh, walk each map individually so that gives everyone time to reset and you know, do it that way. But Chief Sears. Yeah, so as you're looking at the map, so the yellow in that step one is the next level. As we see, as we're watching the rivers uh, flow, uh, over another 1,000 to 2,000 CFS increase is what what that prediction model is, is looking at. So we took the uh, DWR and the Corps inundation maps. Once we ground truth what we were looking at on actually on the ground versus what was predicted, the, the maps were, were extremely over predicting what, what was coming. So we, we utilized those maps uh, with the experts uh, with the river and we're over, overlaid those of what we're really seeing on the ground and then utilizing that to predict the next, next low areas that are along the river that potentially could have inundation. Uh, so the yellow is the first le level, and then the orange would be the next next level of inundation. So yellow would be 8,000 CFS? R roughly in that, in that area. So as we map the, the river the next several days, as we get the influxes of 7,500 and uh, those, we'll be able to measure actually where the river banks are and then see how well is that matching up to that. To that. 
And if it is uh, underproducing, then we will uh, adjust those maps. If it's over predicting, uh, then we're getting prepared and we're staying ahead of it. So that's, that's really what it'll be a daily basis as we're readjusting those as it's very dynamic with the river. Yeah, great question. So this chart is produced monthly, and we know that the the predictions are linear, and uh, the real world is not linear. So uh, we'll continue to work with our stakeholders to update it. As Chief Steer says, we're constantly looking to ground truth uh, what is predicted, and with reality, which is uh, is always variable based on the outflow that's coming. So this this information we know. Uh, you know, all models are wrong, uh, some are useful, so we take uh, what is useful out of them to help guide our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, actions, and then we're constantly reevaluating what our understanding is to see what's on the ground, because no matter if it's in an Excel table or if it's on a map, really what matters is what's happening in the ground in these communities uh, for our citizens, and that's where we're trying to use these predictions to help provide something useful for, for the boots on the ground, for the community members that have these concerns. Your 7,500 threshold, uh, CFS threshold, will that be low enough that Highway 178 through Canyon is not compromised? So we've been speaking with Caltrans, and uh, they're aware of the spots that are low in the canyon, and they're watching them daily. Uh, as Chief Steers told me the other day, as we jumped from 6,300 to 7,000, he only saw anywhere from six to eight inches rise. So that's still, you know, a foot or two before it hits the highway. So I don't want to make any predictions. I'll leave that to Caltrans, but as of right now, it's, it's, it's open. You mentioned uh, for every thousand, I think there's some numbers been bounced around, for every thousand cubic feet per second increase in outflows, does that equate to roughly a a raising of the elevation of the river by a foot. Is it a foot per thousand CFS? And that's a hard one because it depends on topography. So if you look at these maps, there's towards Goodmanville, the, the river gets very wide. So you only see one to two inches there. Where the river gets very narrow, you could see up to a foot. So that's kind of our rule of thumb that we're telling residents. And what did you tell the residents last night um, what level the river has to rise before you start packing up and, and moving out? Yeah, and specifically you're talking about what, at what point will we start initiating evacuation uh, uh, warnings and those types of uh, warnings out there. So we did talk briefly about some of those. Right now we are, uh, I have a whole team that is working through management action points and really looking at uh, what is a threshold for evacuations uh, if needed? So all, all of those are based off of life threat uh, to the community, and that's, and that's really what we base those off of. Uh, as we see uh, through the inundation here, it may be an isolated uh, handful of homes because they're inundated or water's all the way around them and it's unsafe to get into their homes. We, we would initiate them for those isolated areas. Uh, we're not, uh, we don't foresee wide scale, unless we had catastrophic failure or uh, some other uh, incident that happens. So those, those are always going to be things we're, we're pre-planning and planning large for, but also only reacting to what actually is needed. I guess let me rephrase my question. Uh, if I was living there uh, below the bluffs, what's the number I need to look at in terms of outflows from the Isabella Dam? Or I would think, like, you know, maybe it's time to pack back. So I, I think uh, at this point, I think I would have a bag packed already. So, uh, and, I, and I mean that in we should always be ready. We, they know part of our conversation is telling them this is what's coming, this is what we're predicting, and this is what the river's doing now. Uh, you should be ready 
at, at right now. This is that initial conversations or that, that kind of that pre-warning. Um, once we see uh, higher levels, and it's hard to say an actual CFS because we haven't seen what 7,500 really does in its spread. We are predicting those areas, so I, I could see at 8,000. We're definitely going to be looking in those yellow and orange areas that those are potential uh, areas. But like any evacuation, we'll have a trigger or a management action point. Once it hits it or gets close to it, we reevaluate. Is it really what we anticipated? Then we make a decision based on that and, and push forward. And I'm not trying to alarm our viewers at all. I think those are good numbers to look at because we, is historically that's a very high number for for our river, and so uh, at that point we're starting to look at very historical data, uh, no near near term uh, knowledge of that other than the historical data out there. So I, I think those are good numbers to be always prepared and, and get ready and have a plan uh, as as we ask all our community members, uh, you know, whether it be the fire season or any other natural disaster, have a plan, be ready. So uh, if it goes over the spillway, which the Army Corps has said it's probably going to go over at least one of the spillways, if not two of the spillways, how do we know what the CFS, and have they talked to you about how they're going to be able to measure that? Because at some point going over the spillways, you know, Mother Nature takes over. Yeah, so we've had extensive conversations about the spillway with the Corps of Engineers, and how do they, they manage that that flow as it comes over the spillway. So uh, their anticipation is that it will only come over the service spillway. Uh, as it comes through the service spillway, which is the spillway we've all known uh, before they built the new one, uh, the service spillway continue to operate. As it comes over, uh, they, they will adjust the gates of the, the main dam uh, based on how much flow is coming down the spillway versus how much they let out of the gates uh, of the dam. And so as you get a foot of water say we have a foot of water coming over the spillway the lake actually rises the storage rises in the in the reservoir as it spreads uh, uh, and gets larger so you still have that additional uh, spillway uh, and control that's how they control it in that that format as the water they comes feather it back and forth, they feather it back and forth is what they do so so they adjust based on if there's a thousand cfs coming through the spillway they adjust their gates down to uh, the 6,500 so they can stay at that, that 75 if, if that's where we're at. We heard this morning they want to average 7,500. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. If it gets to 8,000, Jim, we're going to be back in this room having, having another conversation. Were some of the residents, I understand that people from Oildale attended the Goodmanville meeting last night, and, and this is hearsay because I wasn't there, but some of the numbers that were thrown around were 10,000, 15,000 cubic feet per second. What scenario was being laid out there, and were they told that, you know, it's a good practice to have a go bag? Uh, those were not numbers that, that were, were talked in there. We're, we're, they, these are the numbers that we are getting from the Corps and, and from the water districts. Uh, as, as the, the routing uh, modeling that Chief Wells was talking about, it really only shows up to around that uh, nine to 10,000 range. If we stayed at 7,000 CFS with that, that's why they're looking at the 7,500 CFS to keep that average across. Uh, that was not, but there was individuals from Oildale and different parts of the community up, up along and asked for several questions and we were able to answer those. Let me see if I can. Uh, I, I was at the meeting last night. Um, I don't recall. Um, I'll copy the uh, what the what the chief just said. We uh, we never mentioned. We certainly never mentioned 15, um, and uh, there might have been a discussion about 10. That graph that we showed uh, that Chief Wells uh, was talking to, uh, the highest that graph goes, um, that is a projected day by day outflow of the dam all the way between now and August. The highest it goes is 9,200 CFS. It doesn't even get to 10. Uh, now, again, uh, things could change, but in order to avoid getting to 9,200 and getting up north of 8,000 8, CFS, 
again, the Corps of Engineers and the Water Master are planning on averaging flows at 7,500 through the summer. That is the plan. And, and going up to 7,500, we're at 73, that are around 73 now. Going up to 7,500, the expectation is, based on current projections, is you avoid having to spike up to eight and beyond and certainly getting into nine. Now, in 1983, uh, this month, the inflows coming in at first point um, on data that I looked at were north of 92 or 9300 CFS. That was a different, completely different event um, at the time. The water master has told me that that is a completely different event than this event. This event is not something to not be concerned with and not be watching out for, but it is not a 1983 event based on the information that they're looking at. Uh, you'll you'll have to ask Mark. I don't know. Is That's what he told me. Does that have to do with the the new canals that have been? Oh yeah, they're they're pull offs. The river's different, right? There, it's deeper, uh, wider. There's pull offs. Uh, there's more development in the area. The topography is different along the river. There are a whole bunch of different factors, but you should talk to talk to him about it. But I just I wanted to reiterate the point that the 7,500 CFS where they want to keep it at and around is long-term in, in it's purposeful to avoid having to get up past that. And Jim, to your point, residents, yeah, if you're, if you're out on the river, you're like, hey, you know, uh, what does this look like? People out on the river, you know, they're looking at this every day. They have, they're measuring it. They're people, property owners have sticks in the river. They're doing stick measurements. They got a pretty good eyeball and understanding of their property, where the river is now, and what these maps are showing. Uh, if it goes up to 7,500, what does that mean? They're at 7,000 now. What does that What does that look like? We talked about that last night. Uh, you heard from uh, um, Chief Steers that uh, did I promote you there, or is it Chief Steers? Okay, sorry. I just want to make sure I'm getting titles right. Um, Chief Steers talked last night about um, uh, what that means: inches to a foot. Property owners can eyeball what that looks like. Uh, on, on their properties. And, uh, uh, and uh, they're able, again, utilizing the, the 80 personnel that we have out there, making sandbags, delivering sandbags, shoring up infrastructure that may be in the path of those, that inch, inches to a foot, foot and a half, um, shoring those facilities up. But um, that, that's what, that was the discussion last night. And um, I think people went away with a, a, a better understanding of their situation and the situational awareness for them and their and their future i think they slept a little bit better frankly last night uh getting some information but our plan is, is to keep it up and keep beating the drum um and make sure that we're giving you the latest and greatest detail but also just a question on, on, the, on the releases if it's being released at 7500 at an average because the problem won't be ever exactly at, at that exact amount does it take into account for the above average temperatures that we may be seeing and we're already experiencing these last few weeks so we, we were told today that there's a cooling trend starting Monday uh, by the National Weather Service, uh, just to let you know. Um, and so, you know, the weather variable, right? It goes up and down. The, these flows, that chart that you saw, were all based on, I, I would assume, the very best meteorologists that could be brought together to predict <laughs> weather for the next 45 or 50 days. Uh, now that, that's not always spot on, but I, you know, they probably among us, they're probably the best people to do that. You have hydrologists, meteorologists, all working on this, and yes, it takes into account historical uh, uh, weather patterns and temperatures and all of that. They put that together, and but to your point, you could we could have a monsoonal weird rain event in the the Sierras. Um, at high elevations, uh, we, we could have weird changes in any of those, those typical weather patterns that skew the data one way or the other. But based on right now, what uh, May 8th, um, and we'll get another one soon, I think, this is, the, this is the best estimate. It is DWR. That's interesting, because um, I had our weather folks give, give me a, a long-term weather forecast for the next 90 days. They say the European models and NOAA's models suggest uh, 
seasonal temperatures to above normal temperatures through mid June into July. Hmm. No mention of a cooling trend. There. Yeah, we didn't hear that today. So yeah, that. I'll speak to that and this will be kind of the end and then we're going to actually do one-on-ones for everybody but um, what we heard today from Hanford local is that they're expecting a cooling trend next week for our temperatures to come down uh, I think if you look on your uh, Apple phones right now I think it's going to say the same thing you're going to see a degree drop starting next week and so what the point is this is just it's all variable you know it could be on the average like you're speaking to but as of next week we're seeing a cooling trend which will lower the snow melt and then we're going to be we're doing this juggling like we always do constantly moving do they put numbers do they put temperature ranges in this cooling trend what are they saying 80s yeah high it's 80s, high 80s mid high 80s. mid high 80s so so on a closing note i just want to remind everyone that there is no evacuation warning in place there are no evacuation orders in place these maps are intel for people to be prepared we, this is how we're going to direct our ground troops on the ground so we can start deploying sandbags so that we hope that we never have to get to a point to put an order in place. That's our job. Thank you for your time. Have a great Irregardless day. Regardless of the numbers that you've seen up here or that the, pub, the public may see, have a plan. Now, this is not an exact science. Everybody that lives along the river, everybody that has animal, large animals along the river, have a plan that uh, gives you uh, eight or ten hours to, to take action because this, this is new ground for most of us and we don't know what the weather's going to do it's it's you know depending on who you listen to we don't know how fast the snow is going to melt we're just giving you our best estimate from the experts but have a plan just like any other event where you're ready to go and uh just if we could get your help jim uh and the rest of the the news organizations that are here the best thing that residents could do um, to help us and help themselves to be prepared for an emergency beyond always having, I have a go bag in my car, um, you know, uh, beyond being, you know, having a go bag and being, registering for Ready Kern, and that is at readykern.com. You Google Ready Kern and it takes you there, you sign up. This is how uh, folks you get, get um, we, we, we exercise Ready Kern a lot. Uh, we have in the past, a couple times in the past uh, several weeks uh, for various places. This is how residents who may be subject to, we always put out an evacuation warning, like, hey, we're thinking about doing this down the road, but we're letting you know early. That would be something that would go out on ReadyKern. And ReadyKern is text messaging, email, hardline uh, at your house, all of that, you can put all those numbers in. That is the very best way people can get real-time information in a real emergency. And we're not in a, an emergency right now, but get prepared for one, whether it's an earthquake or a fire or, or, or flooding. Ready, Kern, I just want to put a word out so that you could all help us promote that in your broadcasts. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.